is what's happening. So, finally got to service my transmission. Uh, I don't drive that, that truck a lot, the F-250. But, uh, yeah, it's starting to kind of act a little funny in 3 to 5. You know, the uh, sort of like a flare almost a little bit, but I, mean, I do actually have a tune on there. But uh, I got to give it some... Uh, uh, do a fluid change. It's probably been, you know, I mean, I probably only put 30,000 miles on the car. I bought it used, but that was like a long time ago. But I don't drive it a lot, so I mean, it could just be a stiction issue. Um, so I'm gonna do like a full, like, uh, I'm gonna drop the pan, do a fluid change, do the filters, got the motorcraft stuff. Um, and this is actually what I got too. I got the Hotshot Secrets. Uh, these guys are known for doing like diesel stuff, you know, with their stiction remover for oil. You know for the injectors but so shift restore automatic transmission uh fluid treatment uh whatever cleaner um but i figured my uh my, my truck has 200,000 miles on it now and i figured maybe uh you know it has a lot of that uh the uh clutch disc material it could be stuck in the uh in the, in the valve body but uh yeah plus because it sits so much you know um i mean it really doesn't I mean it doesn't it's it's, it's intermittent but it's not even that bad though uh, but it's just time to change the fluid anyways because, you know, going back and forth to Big Bear, you know, it's I've done some pretty heavy loads up and down the mountain with uh, the whole bed full of, like, concrete blocks or furniture or whatever, so, um, you know, cabin trips. But, okay, so let me uh, get going there while I drop the pan and uh, have a bunch of motorcraft stuff here. Uh, fluid, what's it called? Uh, they don't make the really the Mercon XP anymore. It originally came with SP, and this is Mercon LV. This should be compatible, that's what they say. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm just happy this thing actually has a drain plug. It's a 13, I don't know if it's 12 or 13. It feels kind of loose. I tried 12. But yeah, some of these drain, these uh, transmission pans don't actually have a drain plug. You got a headache. Oh, it's not horrible in color. A little dark. All right, so the pan bolts are 10 millimeter. All right, to reach the back too, you're gonna need like a flex head like that to get past this cross member right there. All right, there's the valve body right there, but surprisingly, it looks really good. Um, probably didn't even need to do this, but yeah, I didn't know for sure. They probably had just done it right before I got the uh, the truck because the pan looks clean, so they probably serviced it. Yeah, I mean, the fluid could be changed. I'm not going to do like a full flush. I'm just going to do like a fill and change, but um, I got to clean the manual. I'm going to get the pan. I'm actually going to paint the pan too. Yeah, I'm surprised how good the pan looks, you know. Um, like I said, I've had this car for, well, seven years probably, eight years. Um, but I've never done the transmission fluid. Because I didn't put that, I mean, when I first got the truck, it looked like the fluid was good. So, but yeah, hardly even like any brake dust, you know, like the clutch material. Like normally this would be totally dark. Um, how's that looking? Yeah, it's a little. I mean, there's some fuzz on it. The magnet. All right, I think I'm gonna paint the pan too. I'm gonna, you know, clean the pan up and paint it black. Uh, just because I hate rust or corrosion. Even though there's not really anything on here, it, it should be like it looks like it's zinc coated. All right, clean this thing up. Yeah, I forgot to mention this is actually a reusable gasket, so. Rubber one. I think it also has like the over torque things in there too, like the, the metal washers, so you can't over torque it and like squeeze out the gasket on the side. All right, so I'm gonna put a little rust converter primer on there just as a precaution. Test it out first. Okay. Do the cut of this and I'll put some gloss on there. All right, so this old one should just pop right out. Okay. I have the catch pan there. Okay, let that drip off a little bit. And I have my new one right there. Ooh, the filter, the rubber seal got stuck in there. Make sure you get that rubber seal out of it. <laughs> See, this one has rubber seal and that one doesn't. So it's stuck up in there. Gotta make sure I get that. All right, so now I got the seal out of there. Had to get fish out of there. I should just pop back in there like that. Lubricate the seal a little bit. That's it. And the pan itself actually keeps it in place. So, all right. Like the pan, the, the, the transmission pan actually holds this thing in place and prevents it from falling down. All right, cool. All 
Alright, so I gotta cut a engine black on there. <laughs> engine enamel. Gloss black. Now I gotta change the actual bypass filter. So what happens is when this thing gets clogged up, it just basically bypasses. So it's like a little cotton. Looks like a toilet paper roll. Alright, so here is the bypass filter canister. It comes down. Um, 22 miller, I actually have it actually says what it is. That's pretty cool. So I hear these are a nightmare to take off, so I have my breaker bar on 22 millimeter. Alright, so I have a separate drain pan here just in case. So I don't know if they ever changed this one before because like I touched this one, look how dirty my fingers are. So this was designed to pick up the uh, clutch material, clutch dust. But yeah, look at that. So yeah, I don't know if that's ever been changed or not. Alright, so I let those things dry overnight here. Oh, not sticky. Alright, put them back on. Alright, there it is. So this is what I was telling about, the actual the filter sits right here in this channel. And that's what prevents it from moving around everywhere. It holds up, sit, rests up against the uh, pan here. Those little black standoffs you saw. Alright, so, trying to figure out what's up with that. Got a oil leak or something over here, but I can figure out where it's coming from. Alright. Hot oh, shot secrets. So the treats for 20 gallons. All right, so I've added seven so far, and you actually you have to test test it when it's running. If you want this, so right now it looks like it's full, but it's not full. Um, you gotta actually have it pumped up. Um, get that the pump running. All right, so sometimes the actual uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, it can be deceiving. The actual fluid, like you're picking up the fluid from the dipstick or the dipstick with the tube from the fluid you just put down there. So let me show you how it's supposed to look. Here's some dirty, dirty fluid that took out of there. It will actually really stick to those little bulbs right there. So that's cold. Let it run my, my car run hot. You should know that there'll be a huge difference because those things are designed to stick. So let's go. Hot. So those things will really fill off. So that's how you can differentiate the fluid you picked up from the, the tube versus the actual the uh, transmission. That will be very saturated. All right, so hopefully you can see that. Not too noisy. Trying to get to stop. <laughs> so right there. So not, my engine's not fully hot yet. I'm not driving it, but I've been idling it for a while. So that should be like perfect right there. So once it, once it gets really hot, if I'm mountain climbing, you know, obviously it's gonna expand as it gets hotter. All right, so got all dialed in. So uh, in my case, it took 12 quarts, uh, two of the hot shots and uh, 10 of the uh, Marco on LV. Uh, I've seen other people online that took 10. I mean, I'd probably get 14 just in, just in case. Mine took 12, so... Um, yeah, you don't want to overfill it, because if you overfill it, the rotating mass can hit the fluid and create uh, foam. And if you actually have foam in your pump, it's going to not lubricate your pump, and it's going to have metal metal contact and shavings and all kinds of issues. So, same thing in engine oil, too. It's a rotating mass. The crankshaft will hit the oil and create foam. So, yeah, that's why you don't want to overfill it, but... All right, so it's been a few okay. days. Since I did the fluid change, uh, probably drove about 100 miles, um, but the shifts definitely feel firmer, and the three five flare seems to definitely dramatically improved. Um, I probably should actually do my transmission because I do actually have an extreme tune on there, so <clears throat> I don't actually have the uh, transmission tune. So maybe if I firmed it up a little bit, that'd probably go away. Um, just because I'm putting more torque on the transmission, so I probably should do a little bit firmer of a shift. But uh, yeah, definitely an improvement though for sure. So it's hard to say. I mean, like I said, if it's the the shift restore, the bypass filter, or just adding new fluid, you know. But um, I mean, I, the shift restore. I was hoping that it would go inside the valve body and free up some of those electronic sticking valves. But all right, cool.